Let's talk about money. I love money because I feel like it's a game. So 50 million in revenue of sour strips in the last five years. It didn't happen overnight. So it happened on over a decade. The harder you work, the luckier you get. What is the one thing that every man desires? It'd still be easy for him to like pull a hot girl. Correct. Like a younger hot girl. Taylor does the laundry. I don't do any laundry. God, I was resistant to it, and now I'm open to exploring it. From 10 to 18, which is when I probably developed the most, right? I lived with my mom. I lived with a woman. I didn't have a, any siblings with me. I didn't have a father figure because my dad passed away when I was, you know, 15. Max, tune in. Oh, it's going to be a good one, bro. Sitting Welcome. on the opposite side of the table today. Welcome back to your own studio. It's the one thing I, I don't love doing my pod in another studio, but you have a clean studio. So it this feel, is it my studio weird, today. Because it's weird that like I'm sitting where I, I always interview people and I have to be like, I'm just going with the flow. Yeah, I'm the captain now, as Max <laughs> likes to say. <laughs> that is. It's a nice little movie quote, dude. First repeat guest ever on the podcast. I have a feeling you're not going to be the last repeat guest, but have take you, pride in being the first. Have you had Julia twice? Once. Oh. You had one with her and one with her sister. Okay. Technicality, mm. you're the first solo repeat guest. Yeah, you just made it a little bit less less special for yourself. I'm definitely the most repeated guest in your YouTube channel, so this just makes sense. It does. Well, welcome back. What's up? Pull up this uh, this email because, guys, I sent Max an email back in. This oh, was be shit, okay. before I'd ever met Max. Uh, I was you watching. Wanna, you want to read it? Yeah, let me give a little context first. Okay. What, what, what date is it? What's the date on October it? October 3rd, 2017. 2017. Okay, so I started uploading videos January 2017. Mm -hmm. I was watching you, Casey Neistat, some Guzman, and that was about it. Just all top-tier YouTubers. Yeah, all the top. Uh, everyone's on this. You're up there with Casey <laughs> Neistat. <laughs> yeah. um, and I always loved how you take like a lot of pride in the cinematics. Like you'd I'd be like, man, this guy's like getting out, like filming his car, pulling. And back then, your cinematics weren't that great. I don't think back no. in 2017. But by my standards, I was like, damn, this guy's really yeah, the putting bars, so much effort into it. The bar is definitely like raised a lot because you look back at your old videos where you're like doing all these transitions, and at the time when you're editing them, you're like, this is flawless, and you look back and see how bad it is. But you're like at the time, I was like. No, this I was a good transition that was like well thought out. And I look at it now, I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Max's video your videos, and I'd sit that copied it for me for a little bit. The camera's here, you just like smack, you oh, transition yeah. to a different spot, smack the lens again, and just keep transitioning. That's my favorite, dude. Yeah. You wanna read this email? Yeah, read the email. I'm gonna read it in David's voice though. Okay, let's see that. Hey dude. That's my voice. <laughs> yeah. Hey dude. Just wanted to reach out and say thank you. First of all. You are basically the only YouTuber cha YouTube channel that I watch. Second, my channel has grown from 0 to 50K this year, and I get a lot of my editing ideas from your content. So thank you for the inspiration, bro! Exclamation point. Anyway, just wanted to connect and say what's up. Keep beasting. You changed your end phrase. Keep beasting. Do you say beasting anymore? I'll say keep beasting sometimes. That's more like if I'm, re Liar. If I'm replying to a comment and someone's like, hey, it's motivating, bro, like, thanks for the video, I'll be like, like, thanks for watching, bro. Keep beasting. What do you say? Stay beastly? No, because that's like the sign off. Keep beasting is like, you got to keep beasting in your life. Stay beastly is just like, yeah, okay. And what's crazy about that email is, yeah. uh, yeah, I just, I saw it. I remember, I remember seeing it and going, fuck this guy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I never saw it, apparently, because like, in, especially in 2017, I wasn't getting very many emails. So I don't even understand why. I, I don't know why I never responded, bro. I'm How many? Sorry. Hey, I'll, I'll accept your apology. Dude, 2017. How many subscribers you have back then? 200. Probably the same I got now. Probably hit the hit the peak back then. Oh, 2017. Yeah, I was in the 200s, and you're at 50, and now you've. I don't know. I'm 1.6. 1.6. 1.6. How how do you go from 1 million to 1.6 in two years? Well, I went from okay, so 50. So 50 was in October. Because I don't even remember, but 50, I guess, was October 2017. I started uploading consistently January 2017. I think I maybe had like 2,000, 3,000, 3,000 subscribers from old videos that I uploaded. I got to 100 though before the end of that year. So I think from October to November, in that in the next month after that, I went all the way from 50 to 100. I never had like besides besides when I got a collab with like Christian or Chris Jones like early on, I would jump. I would see the number jump like 20, 30,000 in a week or a couple of days, which was like astronomical. But ever since then, it was always like this steady increase until about 350,000. And then it just essentially plateaued. And I have been hovering between in the upper 300s for the past like four years. Yeah. 
slowly yeah. on it, slowly on a decline. <laughs> I've seen, I've seen. Slowly. But it's funny that uh, that I sent that email to you, and it was true, and I got a lot of inspiration. I think that was actually a pretty solid email. I, when I, when you were about to read it, now I didn't remember it. I was like, mm, this would be a little bit cringy. I feel like no, I it, was that was, it was honest, and it was, it was a good true. email. And then it was funny because then I saw you 2017. Now we moved to, to Austin 2018. It was probably 2019 working with Alphalete that I was in the gym and I saw you there. How did you find my email? Because I get DMs all the time of people like, hey, Max, like, what's your email? I'd love to talk to you about something. And in my head, I go, it's pretty simple to find someone's email. Like if you do any. I imagine it was in like your YouTube like yeah. about <laughs> page and like scroll down a couple yeah. lines. and It was probably just there. Like on my Instagram, I think you can just click yeah. like email him and it'll like give my email. Yeah. Wild times. We've come a long way. Yeah. No, but it's uh, yeah, it's funny. It's funny that uh, it started at that. Then it went me to, to meeting you, and then once we moved here during COVID, obviously that's when uh, well, you were the only YouTuber that I also because like I can tell I can tell when someone not only edits their own content. Well, yeah, I like to say I can I can tell when someone edits their own content because I can tell when they film it in a way that they know what they're doing about filming, and yeah. it's not just a bunch of like like uh, special effects that were put on top of content. <laughs> yeah. Like I can tell that there was thought of like the layout and the format of a vlog. So that's what I really liked about your channel was that it was similar similar to mine of like, oh shit, he actually like cares about his YouTube videos and puts in efforts and fly the drone and have the, the B-roll. And well, the, back in the day, the drone was enough to, uh, like speaking of like editing being simpler back then, just having drone shots in your video back then was enough for people to be like, oh shit. I feel like the drone nowadays, I sometimes I, I catch myself like being like, is the drone am I being lazy with the drone where I'm like, all right, yeah, I just I just vlog and then I I drone my car and then I be at the, I be at the warehouse. Then I talk about something, then I drone the I just drone everything. Where like, now I'm trying to like let me let me like film a B roll of like driving so it's like a little different. Yeah, I don't get comments anymore. Like back then every video was like, Man, how do you get the those shots up from the sky of your car like people don't even understand what drones were you know, got, now no one comments anything about the drones people I, will comment about other transitions but not the drone yeah no 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 one cares about the drone honestly you know something i was thinking do you think it, how we like to put this effort into videos and make the make the videos more like it's a i don't know if this is gonna sound right but it's like it's a video right it's there's like a it's like a story you're putting out there do you feel like it pulls away from the personal aspect because we like you know, like, hey, and I got to show you what this is. And it's like, it's like edit rather than just like the most casual, like back in the day of just like, yeah, I'm filming this and it's like not perfect. And it's more like you're kind of with someone rather than you're watching like a personality. I don't know. Sometimes I, I think that when I make vlogs, they don't have any edits or anything in them. That's more like, personal. I feel like it's more personal. I think they're lazier, but in my head, I feel like it's probably more personal to watch. I think both of us like to plan our videos a lot. Uh, you know, the day before I'm like kind of sleeping on it, thinking like some like rough flow in my head. Mm -hmm. But I feel like a lot of times the videos I plan less, even though those days I'm maybe a little more like anxious because like, I don't even have fucking plan. I don't know what I'm doing in this video. But then I feel like those ones a lot of times come out more personal. Yeah. Because think, like they use put the camera up and then what I've realized, let's go anyone out there who's like trying to do content is that. It's a lot of times it's better not to, to think about what you want to say. And I struggle with this. It's impossible because if you think about what you want to say. When you're talking, you're not really present in the like right now. When I'm talking to you, I didn't, I'm not, didn't like think about these yeah. exact things I was about to say to you. So it's coming out like naturally. I'm just communicating, but and that's why a lot of times you, you do like one good take, but you're like, ah, but I wish I said this one other thing. And then I go and I do like three, four, five takes, and end up using the first take anyway because all of those, it's like rather than just organically like communicating, I'm trying to remember a sequence of events in my head that I need to like say one by one. Yeah, but I've I've, I've found out that like with YouTube these days, like I can't film like I used to. I used to I'd go back and watch some of my old content, and I'd be like at the drive-through going to McDonald's or something for like a cheat day or something, and I would like pull up like yeah we're at McDonald's, and then I'd be like I'm like what do I want? And I would and then the camera would just keep rolling. I'd kind of stare at it, and the person would talk and I'd be like uh, and I would just like it'd be like a minute and a half because yeah. it was just what I was doing. Yeah. I wasn't like okay I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get a little shot. Let me get it grab in the bag. I just turned on the camera. I don't think I had multiple takes the first like three, four years of YouTube. Like, I think I was just, I just clicked record, but now I'm like, okay, what am I going to say? How am I going to, how is this clip going to end so I can go into the next one? It's tough times. Tough times. But it's impossible. Like, it, I, I don't think I, I don't think I could just click record and just not think about what I'm going to say. Yeah. I think it's impossible. Yeah. Let's talk about money. Okay. So Max. <laughs> My favorite thing. For y'all who don't know, yeah, he's obsessed with money. <laughs> y'all so obsessed. <laughs> no, it, it's like a it's it's like a game, bro. Like, I mean, I'm someone like I, I'm doing well, but I, I don't live a 
I'm sure people probably still think so, but I don't like I, I'm not like these people who are doing well that are like flaunting their wealth. I talk about like, yeah, we're building a nice house, but like I love money because I feel like it's a game. I feel like it's a game that I'm trying to accumulate a lot of gold. I, well, I would agree with you. I was talking about this recently that uh, for me, the motivation each year is not like I want more money so that I can buy this thing. It's yeah. like I want more money because then I made more money than I made last year. And that like incremental growth just like feels well, satisfying. It, it proves that like all the stuff that you did for the past X amount of time was worthwhile because it, you know, I, not only do I enjoy it, but I also reap the reward financially from it. But looking at it as a game probably makes it, we'll get to this in a second. Looking at it as a game probably makes it easier to make more money, right? Because it kind of like removes the emotional connection to it a bit. Whereas, I th and obviously if you don't have a lot, maybe it's hard to like, it's like, well, fuck, I have to like pay my bills, bro. Bro, I got a great analogy right here, you know, sometimes. you're about to get up and walk out. Oh, no, no. Nah, <laughs> like, so in like Diablo or something, right? Yeah. So there's these games that when you, when you go out there, not, we're not playing hardcore where you die, you lose everything. But like when you die, generally, like in old Diablo, you lose gold. Okay, you would lose some of your gold or maybe you would lose some experience. That's kind of like life. You go out there, you die. Well, you like, you know, you get knocked down, but then you make a bad investment. Yeah, but a lot of times I, I even though I keep going to these areas where I'm like, fuck, like, I can't get past this thing because I can't I keep dying, keep losing a bunch. But I'm like, I need to change up my character. I need to work harder. So then when I go back to that zone, I can continue on. That was deep, bro, because that's so that, that that reminds me more than money, even like trying to talk to girls. Yeah, you know, they're like, you're like. You get, you get rejected a lot, but each time, yeah, you're like you're seeing like the some, like some, negative ten x. Some people's character die; they lose the gold, they never go back to that area. I I I I lose four times that area, and then I go, and then I keep farming, and then I go back, and then I I fuck up that spot. So you look at it as a challenge rather than looking at it as like oh, fuck, I, can't, I can't get close to that fucking area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think that I think that's what you got to do. And the, but that's for money. I think it's extra key, though. Because, I mean, well, actually, I guess with women, you could say it's extra key as well because it's like it removes a lot of times the emotion. You can't remove the emotions out of like trying to talk to girls because that, like, I think inherently, like we we don't want to be alone and we want that companionship and we maybe judge ourselves based on whether we're uh, single or not. But I think with money, it really helps to look at it as a game. I like to think of uh, I don't know about just money in general, but I always like to like when I was growing up, right? I would have friends that I'd play video games with. I'd always have like a friend that was always better than me, right? When I skateboarded, I was good at skateboarding, but like I always, I always had a friend that was the guy that was better than me at skateboarding. I, I was never like really, really good at like one specific thing that was like kind of better than other people. Not like I wanted to one up people, but it was it was never me that was like Max is so good at that thing, right? So when I started being successful and even like financially and started having like a, so was YouTube the first thing? Like yeah, I, ju I just liked that it was something that I finally felt like I was like doing really well at. And it wasn't like, not that I was comparing around to other people, but like I was succeeding at it. And I want to see how far I can like push myself. So even in the finance game, I, I like wait, to look back because I'm like- Wait, wait, wait with YouTube though. So you, you say YouTube was the first thing you found where you're like, Ali, I'm really good at this. Yes. So it's more enjoyable like to do it. Like deadlifting, honestly. Okay, de lift it, okay, deadlifting and YouTube separately, but kind of like combined because yeah. they were kind of the same thing. Did that give you more like confidence in other areas of your life? Yeah, I think when you start being good at something, you start getting even better at it because you're liking that you're so you're good at it. It was like deadlift. That's the reason. Like I was like stronger than all my friends at deadlifting, so I put way more emphasis into deadlifting because what, I was. What was just, your max deadlift? I mean, when I started like YouTube, six twenty something. My max deadlift is six fifty. Oh, six fifty. But like I started, like when I started YouTube, my first ever video. If you go back before I even started vlogging, there's a clip of me I think hitting like five forty or no, it was four twenty honestly first, but. Like in the five hundreds was when I kind of really started coming on YouTube, but at yeah, what body weight? Well, what body weight did you hit six fifty at? Like r right at or right like one seventy? Yeah, one hundred seventy pounds. That's a lot. I've never deadlifted more than what four hundred five for five or something like that. I don't know. As someone who's lifted a shit ton of weight yeah. many, many, many times, I don't think it's. I mean, I can go deep on all this, but like. It, the the risk to reward and like unless powerlifting, that's why I like I've. Some people have been negative to me that I've like given up on my strength training because I just I'm I don't care about deadlifts anymore. I don't I really don't don't care about squatting anymore. Don't care about bench pressing anymore um, because I hit all these like monumental numbers and powerlifting isn't paying the bills and I I don't have the desire to like be a world renowned powerlifter. I never I never did honestly. It wasn't like even when I started seeing a bunch of competition even early on I was never like I want to be the best powerlifter in the world. 
I was just like, I like being, I just like deadlifting. Yeah, but I think, I agree. And I don't care that much about, I mean, we, we both go to the gym religiously, but I don't think either of us, like, we were talking about this, right? That, that uh, there was a period when, like, that, our, my life revolved around the gym. The golden era. I'd wake up, be like, oh, it's like 4 p.m. today. I can put that scoop of pre-workout in there, shake that up. I'll be driving to the gym, sipping on that pink lemonade pre-workout. And it's like you, you'd walk in, you'd be like, yep. Like, you know, I'm my here. Favorite, my I'm favorite here, thing, I used to run this program called Jim Windler 531. It's, like, actually the program that I, I tell everyone to run. It's, like, this powerlifting. I love it, right? And now there's apps where you just put in the number and it tells you what to do. But back then, back in my day, we didn't have these apps. So you would download the program offline, and I would print out these sheets, and each sheet represented, like, a week, right? So I'd have, like, each week, and I'd write, like, the numbers for each of the days I'm a lift. And I would write them out for the month each time. I'd fill the whole sheet out. And I'd, I'd be filling them out. I'm like, oh, my God, in three weeks I get to lift this weight. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. oh, next week I get to lift this. I would be, like, looking forward to the weight that I'm that the numbers say I'm supposed to hit in three weeks from now. And I was like, yes. I would get amped up. Like, I did it. Not no, anymore. No, well, yeah, no, I agree. But I think that that's some, like, that's, uh, I think the gym can be, like, every guy's, like, first true love. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it's like a, it's kind of like a gateway drug to like other self improvement because it's like it's like you said it's so like structured. I can see that I lifted, uh, I benched 150 pounds for eight reps this week, and next week I can probably get nine reps. Yeah, but nowadays at at our age of 34, like I'm not. I guess when I work out, I'm like, okay, let me, I'm gonna keep my schedule. I want to lift as relatively heavy as I can for each session to get good reps, good form. I know you don't care about good form. But, uh, <laughs> for, <laughs> but like, I don't actively, tr- like, I do, let's say, rows every week, multiple times a week, right? I'm not going, okay, the past couple weeks I've done 130 on the rows. Like, I really need to go 140 this time. Okay, I'm going to do two sets, and then I'll try to do three sets. I don't, like, track the weight that I'm doing but and if, try to increase it anymore. I do because I use the Beastly app, but I don't, the weights at this point, they don't increase like they did back when you're getting started, right? Like, it's like, yeah. it, you can a little bit here and there, but, uh, yeah, I don't ever, that's how I've, I've always thought, like, like, you know, me shoulder pressing 70s, I just go, yeah, I'm never going to get to 110s. Like, I'm never, like, I'm fine with, I'm fine with just living in the 55 to 70 <laughs> pound range. I'm fine with living there. But it, it, to me, it seems like you would not be who you are, though, if you hadn't had that love for the gym. Oh, correct. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I've, I love the gym. I just have a different love for it. Now it's, and I think when you've been doing it for, shit, I, I, I twelve think, years or something. Yeah, I think shit? I underplay I how long I've been working yeah. out. I want to say it's probably like, I'd say like almost fourteen years. I think I started working out when I was like twenty. I graduated twenty twelve. That's around when I started. I mean, it's like twelve years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, and but my love for the gym is more of a longevity. I want to look good rather than I'm trying to like improve my my body's physique year after year after year after year so now your avenue for growth is more money let's say right yes I, and i do think it's important and I, I, a lot of times I say, as a man i guess this could be for anyone but i do think it's important as a man to have like a a current avenue for growth right i feel like life gets kind of depressing if we don't feel like we're growing in any area yes so i think at first it was the gym for me yeah then it was probably dating like going through my whole phase but again that felt like growth at the time then it was probably youtube mm-hmm. and now it's probably a little bit more business or like all business i think i don't know who i think a lot of guys say it in podcasts but let me ask you this question see if your answer is the same as all the other guys like what is what is the one thing that every man desires or like what's what's the thing that they hold very dear to them like that they want from everyone respect respect and something that i've loved of building sour strip specifically is i've never been it's like a dopamine hit because I've never been the guy. It was almost, and I don't mean this in like a, a, a shadow way, but like when I'd go out and stuff with like Christian, Christian was always the guy getting talked to mm-hmm. about like Alpha Elite. Oh my God, like Alpha Elite. Like no one ever came up to me. They'd be like, oh yeah, you're goofy in your videos and you can deadlift a lot, right? <laughs> but no one was ever like, igno- whether it be acknowledging my success in business because I was doing really well, but Sour Strips, it's almost like this light switch where like everywhere I go now, people are just like, hey, dude, Sour Strips, man. Like, like, and I'm, it's it's a strange new th- feeling, and I really like it. And I feel like I'm, I feel like I now I'm respected more in the business world. Well, you've probably been respected for a while, but by people who look up to YouTubers, maybe or who watch YouTube. Yeah. And then now it's different because maybe in your mind, people who you consider to be successful respect you. Yeah, and it's not like I'm not like not desire. I'm not like I'm. I, I need everyone to like understand that I'm successful, or I need this like 
a, you know, uh, you know, like appreciation and gratification and you know. But no, I do think guys like women deeply want reminders of being loved all the time, and men kind of deeply want reminders of feeling respected all the yeah. time. Yeah, and like the more of that. I don't know. I don't want to say the more of that that we get, the better that we are, because it's probably not, right? Like, you don't want to turn into, like, I have to have, like, did you just disrespect? The way, bro, the way you looked over to the left when I said that, was that you're disrespecting You, you know what's me. interesting about business, though, is, like, unless you are someone who changes the way that they live dramatically so people can see that you're clearly doing more, like, you're more successful, or you just blatantly tell everyone, like, how much money you have, it's almost like people have to, I think people just see sour strips that they see it everywhere, that they just assume that it's really successful, which it is, but, like, I think, because I'm always, like, I don't, like, I haven't started driving Lambos all the time to for people to be like, damn, Max must be killing it. Well, that's what I want to talk to you about. And now that we're talking about candy, I don't have any, like, chocolate or anything in my mouth, do I? Usually I got no. Julie who, sometimes you, we, when I eat those uh, those chocolate protein bars, okay, we're good. No yeah, yeah, you look beautiful, man. Thank you, bro, I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> so Sour Strips, Max's candy company, most of y'all probably know. If not, Sold fifty million in revenue of sour strips in the last five years. Also, he just launched four and a half years. Don't get it twisted. Okay, by f- by five years, you better be at hundred mil then. I don't know about that. Seventy, maybe. Okay, all right, all right. It's exponentially increasing then. Yeah, it'd be well over fifty. Also, guys, he just dropped these sour strips of bites. That's not that I didn't like the original sour strips. I loved them, but I really love these ones. So they're in Target near y'all. If you live in the states, at least get them at Target. Support Max. Have some good candy, especially if it fits in your macros. Um, so I'm curious, the climbing like the wealth ladder, right? Okay. Because both of us worked, whatever, the average income, and it depends what stat you look, but I think it's somewhere around like 40 to 70K, depending mm-hmm. on the age of the man in the United States. And I understand worldwide, it's usually lower than that. Yeah. Um, so your first job... You're making around 50k a year, I assume, right? Something in that, like less than that. And I, my first job out of, I was like 38, 40. I think I started my first job out of college was like, th- its base pay was like 35,000. You could like make bonuses and stuff. And then okay. I think b- by the time I left my job, the most I was making from my job was like 45. Okay. And you were what, 23, 24? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And what was the job? IT staffing, like recruiting. Okay. All right. So what would you say was the first, like, ink, like the first benchmark? I have a number written down here that I think would be, like, the first benchmark with where you were like, okay, no longer am I that guy making 45K. Like, I'm now at a different level. And I'm not necessarily saying millions, but it was, like, the, the first incremental jump. I mean, I think they all are, like, the same kind of things. That, and it, but I'm saying, like, when you went, probably when you're making 60, like, it's not probably that much of a difference. What was the first, like, incremental jump, do you think, roughly? I'd say making like 100k, okay, yeah, or like seeing 100k. I I I never really like uh, at any point in my life, up until maybe now where I'm more locked in on finances. I don't think I ever really like processed like oh I'm making this much money per month. I think I was just okay. So when was it that you noticed? Okay, when you saw 100k in your account, is that what you're saying? That was yeah. That was like kind of once like... I broke six figures in my in my bank account of like free cash. Like this is obviously of taxes and all that shit. And yeah. So I remember doing that. I remember the first time ever forward, like collectively Wait, did a million dollars. Let's start. Let's start with 100k. Okay, 100k. So when when was that roughly? Oh shit. Uh, I mean, when I started ever forward, I, I'd I'd say that plus the job. So I probably was making over 100k right like the same year that I quit my job. So 2016 was when I started making like. So you're like 25. Yeah. Okay. But again, it's like I never consider. I still no, no, 27. I, what? You were 27 then. 2016. I can't do that math, bro. Right, you're probably 26. Anyway, okay. But like, I never. Uh, I still always thought that like the business's money is the business's money, and like it's not my money. Like I still have that problem. I'm more like, oh yeah, like oh sour strips crushing it, but like I'm 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 doing I'm doing go- well, but like that's sour strips money. Like it's ever forward's money. It's not my money. Well, that's uh, I think it's a beneficial way to look at yeah, it. Yeah, it is. If, <laughs> if, if, if you want to grow the business, of yeah. course. But what what changed in your lifestyle? Would you say when you saw 100k in the account? Well, I'll tell you, I uh, I bought my dream car, the 2015 SRT Grand Cherokee. It was like fifty two thousand um, dollars. So it was half the money. And actually, th- th- yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, this was my that was my biggest purchase. I actually bought. So I I was like dreaming about this car. I went and even like looked at it on a vlog, and like wasn't considering buying it. And then I quit my job, started opening this gym, and I go, I really want that car. 
and I went and bought it, right? But I put a down deposit on it, and then within a month, I go, I'm gonna pay this car off. And I paid the car off like a, like a month later. So and that so that was like the biggest financial purchase I had ever made for a personal thing of like paying a car off in full. It was a used Grand Cherokee, but no, fifty. So fifty k. So it was it was like a significant percentage of the liquid cash you had in your yes. account at that point. Yes. Okay. So you're driving a nicer car. Uh, you also invested to start a gym, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. It was really. It wasn't really like a to like invest into a gym. It was like to invest into. A, myself to have space to film content without getting kicked out to be able to turn the music down when I wanted to film to have space to run ever forward out of the back so it was really an investment into me we never made any money off the gym okay so yeah it was like space to warehouse yeah. the inventory also that was back when you were deadlifting right and, like, and, yeah and doing that stuff I was so, deadlifting so. like ever I would get comments <laughs> in my videos like another video of Max deadlifting district barbell right <laughs> district barbello bro is that still there or no yeah one of the so it was like me and two of my other buddies yeah one of them was just like a clothing brand owner, uh, Peter, who just wanted a place to film content and run his clothing business. And the other guy, Brian Bowtie, he was like a personal trainer and wanted a place to cl- yeah. train clients. So even to this day, he's been trying to get out of it for like two years, but he can't find a spot that he likes better, yeah. um, which is crazy because the spot that the district is was it was always a wasn't the nicest place. But he's still there. Yeah, like still doing well, like running it all by himself, doing personal training clients. Interesting. So it still exists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so first jump in income, 100K in the bank, bought the car. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking for me, it's probably, I don't remember, the first car I bought that was nice was the Audi A4, and I felt so guilty buying it. I don't know if you felt guilty when you bought that, but I went and I, Julia, we, we drove Julia's Volkswagen Jetta from Boston down to Austin, and it started having problems where I took it in, and the car was worth 3000 and they were like, yeah, it's gonna be like 2500 to repair like the axle or something. So I was like, Julia, we're gonna, we're gonna buy a new car. Yeah. So we went, we test drove a, a Honda, a Cord, really, and an and a Audi A4, and that was a well. I know it was a mistake, but it was a mistake in the sense that I was like, after driving those back to back, me and Julia, we we have to get the Audi. Like we can't get the Honda after we just drove the Audi, and that. But that I think I paid thirty four k for that. It was a used twenty seventeen that I bought in twenty eighteen. I guess I don't remember how much money I had in the bank, but I guess my point is at first it was like you were living the same basic lifestyle. You just mm-hmm. had a nicer car. Well, what's interesting about that that I've I, I've never actually talked about is like this internal battle I had when I bought that Jeep. I um, I had on on the instrument cluster on the, the the gauges you could have like different data on it right and I would put the data of like how m- many miles I have till I'm empty in the in the fuel and I was and it became obsessed and I was like driving this V8 you know SRT and I was like oh my god the gas mileage is like really bad in this in this <laughs> car right I'm not getting good gas mileage. I'm having to fill it up like once a week um, and it took premium gas and I started having regrets of being like this is like an expensive car to like, I've got premium gas. I got to fill it up every week. And I started having these like, like, I, I know I can afford it, but like, this is a lot of money. And I, cause I never started spending that kind of money on like a, a luxury car. Um, and then the, what I did is I went in and I, I go, I changed it to temperature outside and I go, you know what? I can afford it. Just, I'm just going to drive it when it needs to get gas. I'm going to put gas in it. It is what it is. And, uh, I, I loved every second of driving that car. Yeah. Loved it. No regrets. That was like treating yourself for the work you'd done up until then. Yeah, but then I bought that Audi, and then I, I regretted that, so I got rid of it. Okay. Well, well all right. Well, okay. See, so, well, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're getting ahead of ourselves. We're getting ahead of ourselves. I, I do. Uh, we, let's let's make sure we talk about that, though. Okay. All right. What was the next jump? And that was obviously that you're incrementing your income along the way. But what's the next jump that when you think back, you were like, I understood I was at the next level of wealth at this point for, from having 100k buying that car. January 2021 was when I saw one million dollars collectively across all my accounts, business, everything. Or no, so it was no January 2020. So it was like right after I launched Sour Strips and Everford was still going. That was the first time between all my business accounts and personal, because that shows you the total number in your bank account of everything. And yeah. when, I, when I saw that include investment accounts as well, or no, okay, it included. So I guess I had a little bit more than that, but um, yeah, it was like the first time I saw a million dollars. Between personal and business checking, just account. between everything, okay. like all, all the money I have, it was the first time I saw a one million, the number one million on a screen. That was like my money. So from a hundred k to to one million, you did you kind of felt like you were the same. Oh yeah, because well, because I, I mean, you you think when you hit these like numbers, you're like, when I say hundred k, like my life's gonna change, and then you hit hundred k, and unless you're trying to really level up your life, like oh, it's kind of same. And when when I I thought the same thing with a million, I was like, when I see a million, like that's what I'm gonna feel. Like I'm successful and I'll, I'll have made it. And I saw the million. I was like, 
okay, well, I guess I'll go do some more work. Like, I, you know, n- nothing changed. I didn't go buy something to congratulate myself or like. I didn't. You hadn't bought the house yet here. No, I did. Yeah. Okay. So you bought that before you saw the a million in the account. Yes. Yes. Okay. No. Oh, no, because I was in my house. So, yeah, so you, you had, you, <laughs> you you bought the house before having the million in your account. Maybe it's 2021. I don't know. I saw a million dollars at one point. It was and, either and January 2021 or 2020. And you're already in the house? Yes. Okay. Because I remember taking a screenshot and sending it to Nick Wright. So was <laughs> what was the the mental, also, just because you mentioned this, it's funny that, that I also had a similar moment. This was in Boston before I moved to Texas, yeah. so it must have been 2018. I remember my dad, because at that point my parents didn't still really understand what I was doing. But at that point, I had, I guess, sponsorship money and some, like, online courses I was selling. And I remember I was on the phone with my dad. And he was like, like, like how's everything going? Like, like everything okay? And I was like, Dad, I, I looked at my bank account yesterday, and there's, like, 600K in there. Like, say what? <laughs> he's like, what? I was like, like, I think, I was like, I, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I think things are kind of, like, starting to go in the right direction. I, don't, I think my mind blacked out my bank account balance all the way from, like, I don't know, 100K to 600K. Yeah. I was like, I don't know. Like, I, I hope this, like, keeps working, but I, I don't even... I don't really have much of a point to saying this other other than like one moment I became aware and I told my dad and I was like, wait, fuck, does that like we've actually made money? Yeah, I think it was always like imposter syndrome because I would like keep making more, but I almost felt like it wasn't fair that I was like making all this and I was not making a bunch of promo money and everything back then. But like when I started make, doing well from YouTube, I was more like, man, this is just something I like to do on the side for fun. And it's like making me money and I've like it's weird that I'm like growing my wealth. And when I quit my job in 2016, um, my mom was like super like worried about like, you need to make sure you have like three months of like, you know, saving up and are you sure this is the right idea? And I remember going like, mom, I have like a hundred K in my bank account, like, yeah. like a hundred. And she's like, Oh, <laughs> I was like, I was like, yeah, like, I, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I have more than enough. Yeah. Like in my bank. But I remember they used to always d- deposit PayPal to my bank account and because that's where I'd sell any like programs or courses. And it would always be for the longest time. It'd always be like $300. Like, I'd be like well, let's get that $300 in the bank account. <laughs> and then at some point it's like, it's like three thousand dollars now. And then at some point, it's like it's ten thousand dollars now. It's like, wait, what the fuck is happening? No, it's it's surreal, man. I mean, I, I mean, I get just a. It, it's a really humbling experience because like I, I'll get checks from individual retailers that are just owing me money for sour strips that are like single checks that are more than I made in an entire year, like in my previous years. Like it was, and that's just for one payment of like a PO. That still that still feels a little. Doesn't it to me? Still, when I'm sending a, a bank wire for like 90k, it, it, it's first, it's it's become more normalized. Now, was like, you, we have to do that to run the businesses. Like you're paying for inventory and shit, but it's still when I'm like filling out like the the bank wire thing on Chase, I'm still like, I ain't about this in 90k right now. But I've I've told Taylor I was like I'm kind of like n- my like numb to money at this point because especially that I handle the finances for Sour Strips and I'm the one that it's making all the purchases that the numbers are so big, like. It, it, I'll, it, there'll be plenty of times, like last week, for example, like last week I had to wire like almost $700,000 for like purchase orders and things like that. And in my head, I'm just like, okay, I'm like, all right, like, what is it? Okay, 720,000. Okay. All right. Wire. All right. I'm going to go into the warehouse and see what everyone's doing. Like it, it's, it's a stupid amount of money. Yes. But it, I'm, it so much is like, flowing in and out now that it's i'm almost numb to these like higher numbers i don't know if it's a good thing i don't know if it's a good thing uh i don't know if it's a good thing either but it's a thing but i'll still be at the, at the grocery store and like getting chips and i'm like oh fuck yeah a dollar coupon I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm like like literally like i'll get like little coupons and i'll save them in my car so when we go back into target i'll be like oh we'll use that next time taylor like it saves 50 cents <laughs> like i'm like hell yeah i got a coupon <laughs> so what gave you the confidence because you bought the house for like i'm pretty sure you've already told people you bought it for like 500k mm-hmm. and then you put like 500k into the renovation right yeah. and this yeah. is right must have been around 2020 because this is when julie and i were looking at houses here and the construction was under underway yeah so, so okay so the yeah, million dollars was 2021 because i bought the house in 2020 okay and obviously you got it you like a mortgage on it so you didn't just pay 500 i put 100k down so i owed 400k in the mortgage okay and then you put 500k though into it which was not my plan at the time so I had a hundred and, and how the, over what period of time was that? Six months. Okay, so as you were doing that, you made more than that amount to get to a million, right? Because you saw the a million in your account after you did the renovation, and the renovation cost you half a million. I think when I when I bought my house, I think I had personally 
like seven hundred thousand dollars. Okay, and you were like, ah, one hundred to seven hundred. Like this is not a stupid investment. Correct. Okay. And then it just over the next six months, I was like making more money. But so I just yeah, I, over the time, I wouldn't say six months that I put. I probably put like three hundred over the per, like first four or five months, and then it was like little things that had to keep happening like yeah. after I got the house. So, uh, yeah. And what's interesting is I bought the house, what, 2020. Okay. I put hundred down. So 400 K mortgage. What do you think my mortgage is at right now? So I've been paying it every month. Well, I know that the first few years it's like exclusively Bro- interest. That you oh pay. yeah, bro. It's, it's at like 350 right now. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> what I think people don't understand is that if you get a mortgage and this is the value, let's say you get a, a mortgage for a, a million dollars that you're paying interest on the amount that you haven't paid the principal on Mm -hmm. so at first you're paying three percent interest let's right now like seven percent interest on a on a million but your payment stays the same for the 30 years so at first you're paying like exclusively interest and at the end you're paying like exclusively principal yeah i I didn't realize that i didn't realize that till the first mortgage i had and i was like why am i paying all just interest payments yeah and then i used to pay um like an extra thousand dollars and it's interesting if you like pay an extra thousand dollars like it'll you put in the calculator and it'll say this will take 12 years off your mortgage or like five yeah. years by paying an extra eight hundred dollars a month or something but my mortgage is like a three three and now with interest rates on your money you can get five it, it actually is not advantageous to put money towards the towards the the additional uh, principle i guess of of your mortgage because as long as you're taking that thousand you would put and putting it into something that is making five percent if you're just seeing an account then it's dumb but like i'm making more money on you know five and a half percent with an investment rather than paying all my mortgage off faster yeah no no that's why right now i'm at three percent on ours if the mortgage if interest rates drop below three percent all the money that i've been investing into like money markets yeah i'll immediately just start paying off the mortgage faster yes Yes. you have to be like brain dead about that anyway okay so your lifestyle i would say from external perspective from having one million in the bank to where you are now I don't know if you want to share how much you have in the bank, but I think you probably have closer to $10 million in the bank. <laughs> We're doing all right. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. From an external perspective, your life hasn't changed much other than planning to build this, this uh, dream house, let's say. Yeah, I guess I just more... I don't desire a lot of things, but now it's just... When, like, I don't actively want a bunch of shit. Like, I, I don't. But, like, when I do want something, I just go, I'm going to go get it. But it's not very often, and it's not... But what's, what's an example of something you're like, ah, I'm going to go get it? I mean... Other than camera gear. Well, th- I mean, one, I know it's a business yeah. write-off, yeah. but for me, like, if, if I just want to upgrade anything electronic, if I'm like, I want to redo my entire computer setup because I want these like newer monitors, I, w- I won't even think about the cost of the monitors. Not even just because they're business write-off, I'm just more like, I want them. Like, yeah, like, I, I, like I want the new like MacBook Pro and it's 5K to get fully like maxed out. But like exactly, but when we I'll build use our, my money there. When we build our computer, like yeah. Joe's building a computer, I was like, I want the best possible parts for this computer. He's like, it's like, bro, you're not running like Skyrim on 4K. You don't need this. I was like, I want, I want the best computer. Like I want wh- when I'm using this computer, I want it to be the fastest possible machine that like I can buy. This is rare because especially in like 2024, I think um, people. I don't know if they just l- – people enjoy nice things, right? People want to have the RSQ8, mm-hmm. the Audi RSQ8. They want to have the Lambo. They want to have the big house. But I almost feel like – obviously, it's praised on social media, but I almost feel like we live in a world where you feel like that's what you should do also. Like you should get the really flashy car. And you went and got the RSQ8, which let's say is a very flashy car. Yeah. And you – within, what, four months, you, you sold it and went back to the Jeep? Yeah, because I bought that car – so what happened is in my Grand Cherokee, um, like pieces of the carbon fiber were like starting to pop off. And now what I told myself is I'm like, oh, I'm driving around this car. I'm a, I'm a super successful business owner. I'm driving around this fucking car that like the, all the carbon fibers like popping off and stuff. Now, all of that was under warranty and I can get it like fixed because it was like an issue. But I just use that as like an excuse. I'm like. I need a nicer car because I'm a successful business guy and I deserve it. And that's what I told myself. So I went and bought this like $130,000 car and I thought that it would like make me feel happy and it didn't. Like I drove around, not only did I not like a couple things about it, but like I just, I was like, oh, like when I drove my SRT, my Jeep, every time 
I drove that car, I was like, I love this. And it was because I was like, I, I dreamed about this car. I saw it out. I wanted it. I wanted it. I couldn't get it. And I finally got it. And it was a big thing for me. But when I could just easily buy something, it, it was like it didn't fill that like enjoyment, I guess. But then you'll never get that enjoyment from another car, which I'm also. Well, I don't know. Maybe maybe there's something that I fall in love with. Okay. But I guess the difference is now I can just buy it, even if it's maybe a poor d choice to buy it. Like I can buy whatever I want, but now there's not anything that I yearn to have. I just want, really, I want this nice house. Like that's like that's where I'm going to spend a lot of money in this nice house, and I'm and I'm totally fine with it. It's funny you say that about the car because when I got the the Tesla Model X Performance, that was the car. That for like a year I was like, oh, I like that'd be that'd be real nice if I had that car. Yeah. And every time I drove it, I, I felt very similarly, just very like I don't know if it's like proud or happy. I really like the experience. And since then, I've had the RSQ3. We have like the the Ty the Porsche Taycan and the BMW X5M. And I haven't I haven't traded them back in, but I haven't and I and I and I objectively think these are actually nicer cars than that. But I haven't had the same emotional like experience with it that I had with that. that the yeah, Tesla. I don't know if I'll get an emotional experience. Like I'm buying this new Jeep at the end of the year, but I mean, not that it's cheap, but it's a seventy two thousand dollars. And I, I've just never really been a car. I'm just a Jeep guy. Yeah. So I when I bought a expensive car that didn't have like this, I have a lot of like reasons why I'm a big Jeep fan. There's a lot of like deeper reasons of why I'm like really infatuated with this brand that I don't have with these other cars. So that's why I don't really like, I mean, that's why I'm like a really successful guy and I drive Jeeps because I just like Jeeps. Like I don't. But part of me also feels like you kind of like being the successful guy who hasn't spent that much money. Like you, you, you kind of like, you, you, you think you kind of like branding yourself that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. It's something I can lean into. <laughs> I can lean into it because I'm more like, I see a lot of people not like, oh, I'm doing better than that guy. And like, I know that, he can barely afford this thing. It's not that. It's more of like when I see people driving like really, really flashy cars and, and I have a general understanding of their finances in my head. I'm like, why are you spending that money on that? Like, I, I don't know. I don't care what people do with their money, but I'm just like, I would if I was at this level, I would never buy a $200,000 car or $300,000 car. Well, well, I agree with you. And I think we both have more mindset of like, this money is more valuably spent towards something that helps out one of the businesses or launching a new business mm -hmm. or on things that make our life easier to make YouTube videos because yeah. that's like worth more to me. If I can edit a video in half the time, that's worth a lot more to me than any car that I would drive. You know, what's interesting though. I feel like the, the world that we're in and I, I like it cause we're relatable and we're like, you know, people saw the come up, but like you look at people who are really, really successful on social, like look at these big streamer people like Rice Gum or FaZe Banks or I don't know, uh, Steve Will Do It, like the Nelk Boys, like they like are very open about like, look at all this designer shit I got, look at this fucking watch I bought, like, the, and, and everyone's like, <laughs> woo, motivating, right? But I f would feel like an asshole if I bought any of that stuff and was like showing it like they're showing it but it's like almost like different audiences. Like our, it'd be distasteful to our audience. And I'm like, I wonder how people build audiences that like when you buy super luxury shit, it's motivating to them. But if I was to like just go on a luxury shopping spree and be like, oh, yeah, I spent ten thousand dollars at the mall today, like people be like, gross. <laughs> well, well, it is an interesting point that both of us built our, our when I say brands, I guess our YouTube channels on, hey. This is the documentation of our journey, being very honest about where we started. Like neither of us were trying to flex on anybody. I was driving yeah. a bicycle around Boston when I started, right? Yeah. Um, so maybe that's a, 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 a subtle difference. I don't need to flex. Like how you, how you said, like how you said, like oh, I, I like being the guy that yeah. you know is doing really well, and he can be like, oh, look at me. I don't, I don't need to spend all this. You, shit on you that. like being like you want to be like Jeff Bezos, but driving in on like a Honda. You know, <laughs> and if anyone ever feels like that. I will say one thing. This house I'm building will be the opposite of that. hundred <laughs> percent. This y'all see my house that I got that and I, I go like I'm very I, <laughs> I love our house. It's the biggest house I've ever lived in. It feels huge. Max is gonna be quite a bit bigger. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna mic drop like on this house. And I'm like, and but this is like what I'm what I want. You've just been like saving up like the goose eggs, like the goodwill, yeah. goodwill the audience to be like now you can hate on me because now I got the, the very lavish house. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I'm going to love it. It's going to be the SRT of my house. You know, like I'm going to be like, I've, 
this is what I want to spend my money on, and I'm not going to skimp on what I want. And yeah, not to be like, uh, this, this might come across as like the poor guys are driving the Lambos. But when you start to build luxury houses mm -hmm. on like land that's worth half a million ish, you start to realize like I could have I could have had twelve Lambos instead of this house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, things you, in perspective. You, you know how it's like the opposite when you but, see people with like like a cheaper house and they have like a bunch of supercars that are worth more. Mine's gonna be the opposite. I'm gonna have this like crazy house and I'm gonna have three Jeeps. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm gonna have like three Jeeps. All of my Jeeps combined are less than like a mid a mid tier Lamborghini. Yeah, <laughs> and that's gonna be my my fleet of vehicles. <laughs> but I'm in the same as you, where I've like tried to be a car guy a little bit, but I get more enjoyment from like waking up in like the nice house. I'd rather I'd rather balance my portfolio is the wrong way of saying it but i'd rather like invest he more heavily into the house and less yeah. into the cars i'm stoked about the house honestly yeah. Like, yeah. i can't wait i can't wait me, me neither not excited for the bill though yeah <laughs> yeah don't tell me i gotta oh. raise my budget i know all about that oh bro yeah it's gonna be whatever you think it's gonna be think it's gonna be a little more than that and then it's gonna be a little bit more than that oh man especially these pavers in the driveway bro <laughs> the pavers <laughs> <laughs> Max, he came to our place. He saw the pavers in our driveway. Real big on the pavers. They're so instead nice. Instead of just the poured concrete. They're so nice. Yeah, they are nice. But by the time I didn't select those either, like the 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 builder suggested. He'll be the real test. By the time I start building my house, it'll you'll be in that house for about a year. I'm gonna come back and look, and I'm gonna be like, are they fucked up at all? Like, does it? Do they last? Or do they look that nice? Because if they look that nice after eight, nine, ten months, I'm like, all right. They the pre sometimes I'm like. By accident, pull out really fast and pull out quick. Like there'll be like tire marks, but then if I have like the pressure washer when I'm washing the car, it'll wash them. Yeah, right I off. never pull out, so that's screw. None the Jeep. All right, you're about to be a married man. Yeah, congratulations. By Thank the you. Way. The last podcast, I was not even an engaged man. No, you were not. You were not even an engaged man. That's what I was realizing. So, and look, I know you always think that I'm pushing like the red pill angle, and I'm trying to find. Cracks in the in the cement. Okay, and maybe I am, and but, but I, I'm I'm prefacing it by saying I know you love Taylor, you respect her more than anything, mm -hmm. and so do I. But be real, now that like the marriage is getting closer and like that lifetime commitment's getting closer, do you ever find yourself like second guessing it or having like no, not no. even like a little bit, no. Because I, I look at it like this. I'm going to say with Julia, and, I'm and I was always 100% but there'd still be like some moments. Maybe it was closer to the wedding, to be fair. Like, I wouldn't even call it second guessing it, but there was some moments like weeks before the wedding where I was like, I'm really about to like be committed to this for life. And it wasn't like, then I thought like, oh, maybe I shouldn't. But like, I feel like it's it's a, the biggest commitment you're ever going to make. Yeah, but I, I look at it like a couple different ways. One, I look at Taylor as a person and I go, I think everyone is always like, Oh, you say that this is like not like the best you're gonna get, but you like you have a quality girl. But like Taylor is a like a very unique girl in terms of I like to think that I can like really analyze people and like understand like everything that ma that makes them and like just I think Taylor is a just a very special girl and um, I think she fits so well with my life and everything. And there's I could go on rants about all the specifics you know of of of, of why it's like that, but. Her, just as herself, is I think, I'm like, I, I don't even like to word this like this, but I'm like, I don't think there's like a better match for me than her because of everything that we have. And I know that's like, well, there always is, there's always this, but I'm like, yeah, but it, you'd have to really understand us to like understand it. But then on the other side, I'm like, this is like what the next pa chapter in my life is. Like, because if it isn't marriage, if it's not marriage, because I already like, have like a, a great girl, so I know I want. To, I'm I'm fine with her being the girl that I'm marrying, but like marriage, if I didn't do marriage, I'm like, like I wake up and I wake up, I walk, dude, I come to the office, I go home, I eat, I work out, I, I go, eat food and go to bed. If I wasn't getting married and like starting to have a family, I'm like that would just be my life forever. And I'm like I like what I'm doing, but like I'm ready for like the next change in my life, and I'm I'm looking forward to the next evolution of like the next chapter of my life and. If I don't do that, I'm essentially just going to be doing this forever, and I want change. So what are the reasons you think you're prepared for for marriage? Because I I think I found a – we found each other, you know? But well, no, I, so outside of Taylor's. I know you think, like, Taylor's a good No, marriage. I know, but, oh, like, yeah. I, I'd be like, I found a great girl. Yeah. I'm financially secure, okay. and also, like, I did the single thing for a decade. 
Like I, so that's out of my system. I have zero, zero desire to go back to trying to pick up chicks or going out to the clubs or hanging out with random girls. I, I don't have interest in that anymore. And like, I'm, I think as a, as a man, the, one of the biggest strains would be like, can I financially support whether it be her, the kids, the future, whatever, what if things go wrong? Like that, but I'm like, I'll be good. Like, I know I'll be good financially. I know I'll, I'm, know I'm happy with her. I'm like, it kind of, all the boxes are checked. I don't really know why I would really hesitate. Yeah. No, I, I feel very similarly to you. And I think as a man, like when you find not only a girl you get along with, but you find like a, a, a woman that is clearly, I don't want to say capable, but like extremely qualified to be the mother of your children. Like you can see it. You can be like, I can tell she's going to be a great mother. And I think when you find a girl like that, that's where you're like, that's everything I need. Yeah, I feel like that's, well, finding wifey is about is more about finding that, mm -hmm. finding exactly that, being able to like close your eyes and be like, if we had kids together, like I'd feel really good about her being the mother. Yeah, you you wouldn't just want like a, an attractive girl that would n maybe not be have like motherly tendencies. That okay, well, if you could say three things, one, there has to be some level of attraction, right? Like you don't want to be like a high level of attraction. Yeah, like yeah, I, I, yeah some level that's uh, it doesn't maybe have to be the girl that you think's the hottest girl in the entire world. That'd be great if it is, but like it's got to be above some certain level where there's like sexual desire. I'd say right. Mm -hmm. So like that 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 part of your life has some fulfillment. Two, I think you're right. There's, they have to you have to say hey like she, I could close her eye, close my eyes, close her eyes, and and see her being the the mother of my children. And the third thing I think also like you guys just have to like vibe and like spending time together has to feel kind of effortless and not mm -hmm. like, because this is, I'm sure there's girls you've dated in the past, the girls I dated in the past were like even maybe a month in of dating them when I, or even two months in when I was hanging out with them. Because at first it's normal to be like anxious and want to show like your best side and like make sure that you're like being flirty with them and like leading the way like a man. Yeah. But after a few months, if it still feels like you have to like not put on a mask, but like put on a show maybe. I feel like that's a bit not a red flag for the girl, but maybe a red flag like, hey, it's not like the right, the right like uh, match. Yeah, I'm I'm the world's most comfortable guy with Taylor. I mean, I mean, I don't think this is what I always wondered. Do you think people like Andrew Tate or something when they have their bad bitch in the side of the Bugatti? Do you think she? What if she ever like is she ever allowed to go? Hey, like, can I put on some like music that I want? Like, can I put on Sabrina Carpenter? Espresso? Could I put on some Taylor Swift? He's like, fuck no, right? But like Taylor blast Taylor Swift. And I'm just like, mm, mm, mm. like <laughs> I'm just like comfortable with her. Like it's it's. I think all stuff went out the window of this. I think there's times to be a man and you know do manly things and make you know the decisions and whatnot. But it's also time to be like, hey, this is my partner. This is like this is someone that like I'm on this journey with, right? We're like we're, we have a common goal together. I'm not trying to be one up of her. She's not trying to be one up of me. We have a common goal of happiness, enjoyment, fulfillment, children, values. We're all going to the same okay. goalpost. But how do you balance? And I agree with you. Um, but how do you balance? Because there's a balance between being comfortable and just being yourself and letting your guard down around the person, but also still like putting in effort, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's something that I, uh, I'll even, you think like putting your effort in, in like a relationship? Yeah. I, I mean, well, okay. The balance on one hand Again, being able to let the guard down and not feel like you have to try. But the other hand, like, you also don't want to turn into this, like, a lazy, sloppy, like, piece of shit around the girl, yeah. I guess. Yeah. No, I mean, I uh, I think about that a good amount because, like, sometimes on the weekends I'll just want to be lazy and play fucking a video game for five hours or something. Like, I was, <laughs> like that's, like, what I would have done maybe before Taylor. I'd be like, yeah, yeah the weekends, like, I don't have anything to do. Yeah. I'm not filming a video. Just sit and play video games for, like, hours. And sometimes I'll, I'll still do that. But I'll, sometimes I'll feel like, man, should I be like, you know, like working on stuff and improving, you know, manual labor outside to show that I'm a, like a man? Like, is this, is this like, what should I be doing? But I don't let, I, I think about it for two seconds. I go, nah, I'm going to go back and play video games. <laughs> <laughs> I got to level up my fucking sorcerer. I got you. I got you. What about, uh, but I think it's important to put in effort and something that I, I think Taylor and I go on enough events all the time that it's not a problem, but like, well, I guess I'll, 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 the effort I'm talking about maybe is more like, because the effort you, we, that everyone puts in up front is like wanting to, to portray an attractive side to the yeah, other party. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I, I think the danger that some relationships fall into over time is there's no effort there anymore. So maybe you just like always dress like a complete slob. You'd never, 
le- initiate a sexual encounter in like a more dominant way. You, uh, I mean, I know we're not letting our bodies go, but this type of thing where like th- that effort, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, I don't really give a fuck if she finds me attractive anymore. Like that's, that's more the balance I think I'm talking about feeling comfortable with them, but also still maintaining some like attraction and excitement. You know, it's interesting. You, you, you mentioned this uh, this morning, uh, David didn't go on the walk with uh, for the dogs this morning because he was prepping for the podcast. But Taylor, uh, Julie, and I went on the walk with the dogs, and um, they were talking about something that they said that the reason that girl they think that they said the reason that girls like the whole dad bod trend is because then the man has become comfortable enough to like kind of let themselves go like and then wouldn't like leave them for like a hotter girl because they're like more like I'm comfortable I can get a little like chubbier with you right versus like a guy who's like wanting to be like tip top all the time they're like there's like a worry that they, they have an, an increased like oh this guy has it would still be easy for him to like pull a hot girl correct like a younger hot girl but, but girls want like uh I think they want a, a dad bod and, okay first of all I don't think girls want a dad bod I can see a girl like wanting a dad bod in this scenario for the comfort of not feeling like she could be cheated on yeah but they they probably still want that to guy guy to be like wealthy and like have everything else in order. But the, but like just the dad bod, so mm-hmm. it'd be harder for him to cheat. Yeah, yeah. But is there is there a male equivalent to that? Because I think girls can do this in a couple of ways. One is like wanting the dad bod because now he's less likely to cheat. The other was like, I think some girls. This isn't the case in our scenario. Will marry a guy who's like twenty years older than her, but she'd rather be. She doesn't want to be like the girl that gets left for the younger girl. So she's almost like protecting against that by being the younger girl is there a male equivalent to this i don't think so i think they were talking today about the reason that like girls go for the guys that are over 40 is so that then they know that they're the girl that the guy's leaving their wife for that's what i'm saying rather than like them being the one getting left waiting to be like oh shit like i'm 50 now and my husband's 55 like is he gonna bounce no i think it's important to continue to try and and be romantic in relationships and and uh you know, Taylor and I will still like we're 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 do, making dinner and like we will grab each other and just like d- dance around the fucking kitchen and like you know do stuff and be goofy and and um, I think you know sexually uh, we still try to you know do things that are spicy and exciting and maybe you know uh, um, surprising and and you know it's it's definitely something that like you'll watch movies and you'll see people in movies you know making food and then they just like stop and then they just like get on the the island and you know push all the food off i was like well i've never done that i mean that's <laughs> i'm not gonna push all the snacks on the ground like that seems a little excessive you know yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not, you know but uh you know i like i think it's i think it's important to kind of maintain that and luckily i'm fortunate enough taylor and i are fortunate enough that we're in a position that we do a lot of things very frequently so it's never we never get caught in this routine because I mean, once or twice a month at a minimum, we're going somewhere, going to this event, you know, doing group things out. Um, One thing that I want to get better at that I know that I maybe slack at is I, you know, you hear people like, um, you know, hey, every week we we do a a date, just me and my spouse or whoever. Um, I'm always like, oh, we travel so much that that's kind of it. But like, I I definitely want to get more into like, hey, let's have regular dates, like just you and me, regular, but a lot of times we're like, ah, we don't want to leave dudes. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, we, it's the same uh, thing where we travel a lot. But anytime we have a week where we're like not traveling, I try and go like that, set up like a date downtown. But yeah. I do agree that like on that day, and I will always enjoy it. And I'm sure she's always looking forward to it. But on that day, I'm like, we could just like cozy up and like watch a movie tonight instead. And like, yeah. I'd, I'd kind of like my preference would rather be that at least when i'm like in the middle of the work day like working and working out i'm like oh, it'd be nice to kind of just like but do, e- exhale at the end of the do you day. think it's more for the girl that you're doing it for not that like you don't enjoy it i like i like dressing up i like going out and having a night with taylor but it's like more of like a like if i was like hey taylor do you want to go out or stay in tonight right she'll probably be like i don't care yes but maybe maybe she would like to go out yes. but for me like i truly don't care like i if I, I could stay inside all, I don't need to go anywhere and I'm fine with it, but I'm more like, oh, let's do date nights because I, I not like I think it's important for Taylor, but like I want to show her that I'm like continuing to try and, and spice it up. But like, I think it's important for both of us. Yeah. Even though if I don't, it's one of those things that like, I don't feel like doing it. Like maybe it's kind of like similar to like, I don't feel like going to the gym, but like I know I should because there's benefits to it. But like with this, it's one of those things like I have a lot of resistance earlier that day to like, 
I guess we gotta drive downtown tonight and like, like are we? But it's like, are we just doing this to say that we're doing this? <laughs> no, it, yeah, but but my point is like, once we're like there and it's like a cool restaurant and we're like across from each other in like a different environment, yeah. immediately I'm like, like this is, is like that, this is good. Like is we're, that, we're more present also because I feel like at the house sometimes you can fall into the uh, the habit of like you're kind of around each other, but mm -hmm. it's not like quality time. Like yeah, like maybe she's cooking, but then I'm like getting some emails done, and then we're eating together for a minute, but then. Uh, she's like feeding the dogs or something, and then. But I feel like when you're out like at a date night, like you put the phones away. At least we we keep these here. We we put the phones away, and it's just like even if it's just an hour or two hours, we're just like together, present in a different environment. So yeah. I think it is really good for the relationship. I, I f the the time that I'll feel that sometimes is like so we made the stir fry that you ate. I can eat the same thing every day. Like yes. I r I truly can eat the same thing every day, and I don't get tired of it. So like we let's say we make this one dinner on like Monday and then it comes Tuesday it's like what do you want for dinner tonight and then she's like I don't know I'll be like you want to do stir fry again right two days in a row no problem but then the third one I'll be like what do you want to do for dinner so I'm, I don't know but like first thing in my head I'm like stir fry yeah we can just make stir fry again but I'm almost like I, maybe I need to start being like no let's do something different so she doesn't because I, I guess I, I get in my head of like maybe Taylor isn't as fine as I literally am with monotony and doing the same thing over and over again yes where I, where maybe she could be well i think an aspect of this is that uh, well particularly for like people who who have a lot of work to get done on a daily basis mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you're an entrepreneur in our case we are the like we're doing so much throughout the day that like i feel like we kind of just want to relax at the end of the day yeah and not that taylor and julia aren't but they're not managing as much as we are on a daily basis so I think it makes more sense that to them, like the end of the day is like, maybe that's the thing that they're looking forward to, like doing something different. Whereas for us, we're looking forward to like turning our brain off. Yeah, I think when you're a business owner, your brain is firing on a higher capacity than people who are not like having the stress of like making sure that the whole thing doesn't crumble down, right? Yes. Like if you work at a company, my brain wasn't firing as much as running the company. Yeah, like, of course. And, and I think it'd be impossible to argue that you know, no, you like you want to get like I wanted to do my job well when I worked for a company so that hopefully I could get like a raise. But yeah. like the, I have no selfish interest unless you have equity in the company. You don't really have like selfish interest in like this company better fucking grow this year. Yeah. yeah. So so that's how I, I do it. But yeah, no, I think it's a I think it's important to be self-aware as well in a relationship to be like, hey, I want to continue to try. But the way I look at it and I don't know if it's a good thing, I'm more like. I'm fine with us doing monotony, monotonous things and kind of living a repeated life because if at any point we want to be like, let's go on a little trip, we can. And we're very fortunate to be able to do that, right? So that's why I'm not as like stressed about, oh, it's been a week or two. We haven't gone like on a, a date, date. But I'm like, oh, it's, we can go to the beach. You know, we can like go to Cancun yes. next week for a week, like whatever. Yeah, I agree, but I also think that's – a convenient thing for us just because it structurally like makes us not have to like also worry about like uh, yeah like scheduling the date night and i will say that's one thing that was really nice about us when we were in spain because in marbella as you saw like within a 10 minute drive from our house there was just so many like trendy cool restaurants with different vibes and i think that way like two nights a week we would do date night and it would it, it more naturally happen because like that was more like cohesive environment for it to happen but like our relationship was maybe a little bit closer mm -hmm. having those experiences so uh, this is a reminder to myself i'm challenging myself more 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 regular date nights here in texas no i i, I fully yeah. agree yeah. like it's something that like i think of a lot but i'm always like ah it's kind of like late already like but it's also gotta, like i gotta like get on open table and like find the right restaurant and then sometimes i'll start doing it and i'm like i don't know what restaurant yeah I'm and, go but, to. but i think i think we overthink it sometimes too it's like yeah i'm sure julia and taylor love to like dress up for like a really nice dinner but i don't think that date night needs to be Mastro Steakhouse, right? It, it could be the local Mexican spot where you just, you're not like bumming it, but you're just like, you just like. I do think there's something nice to try in a new place, even if it's not mm -hmm. like Mastro's level. I think that it's, like, there's something about like, oh, let's just try like a new place. Yeah. There's something like a little more exciting about that. I'm also more open to date nights when I'm not like cutting. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm going to go there and just get like the chicken with no sauce and like, I can't like, I can't eat everything. Yeah. Whereas like the, f the, the winter time, I'm more like, yeah, let's go out to eat. All the time. The summer. I know. I don't think you should be cutting, but we don't have to make this about that. <sighs> all right. All right. All right. All right. So we had on Max's podcast a, a bit of a debate. And in general, we agree that like as a relation, on a, me and Julia, we're a team. I know where right? this is going. Yes. And if we're a team of like a basketball team, you don't want 
five Kyrie Irvings out there. You don't just want the point guard. You want okay, the, I don't know what that means. You okay, you don't, you don't just want five point guards. Who are say LeBron. This, I know LeBron. Okay. You don't want... Well, you might no, want five, you you might want five LeBrons because he can do a little bit of everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bad example. Um, yeah, okay, football's better, right? Because you don't want like six or 11 quarterbacks on the field at the same time. It's like, that doesn't work. It's too many quarterbacks. So in relationships, I think it always makes sense for there to be a division of responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Now, the caveat here is that, look, if your girl works a full-time job and you work a full-time job, that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be the traditional masculine and feminine dynamics. I do think on average that those work better because they're kind of based in like our innate strengths in, like women are more uh, let's say in tune with their emotions mm -hmm. and, and maybe they can be a little bit more uh, patient whereas men we tend to be like stronger more, more brute for force more like we can just put our head down and do a lot of shit so like that tends to create a division of responsibilities where a lot of times it is the man's responsibility to, to make the money and do the physical labor yeah mow the lawn push the trash out to the street these things and it makes more sense for women to do the more things that may require a little more patience keeping the house clean uh Things that require a little more, more attention to detail. Yeah, yeah. emotional uh, stability, yeah, connecting with the children, uh, you yeah. know, like raising the children most of the time. But we had a debate of the, what, what? the division of labor. <laughs> the division of labor. Oh, because I use an example of, in, with me and Julia, if it comes to, there were two examples we used. One was cleaning up dog shit. Yeah. And one was putting away the dishes and cleaning the dishes after dinner. Mm -hmm. And I said... Look, for me, like, basically, Julie's doing those all the time. And, and well, Julie's always doing the dog shit because I don't, I don't know. I just don't, I, I would fuck that up. But she's always going to do the dishes unless, like, I kind of want to be, like, nice and help out. You and Joe were more like, well, like, I'd still kind of, well, I'll still kind of do the dishes. Yeah. Yeah. So the way I look at it is, like, if, if we make dinner, Taylor, let's say Taylor makes dinner, okay? And let's say she doesn't, which she normally does, like, almost clean the pan immediately after. But let's say she doesn't for whatever reason. And it's just, like, in the sink. And I'm, 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 a, I know that she will, later that day or the first thing in the morning like clean the dishes but when i go because i always get my snack a little later after dinner right so i take the our plates and i go and i'm like oh i'm gonna go put it in the dish in the dishwasher or the sink right i'm gonna if i go to put something in the sink and there's like a pan there i'm more like why don't i just fucking clean it like i'm just gonna clean it while it's there i'm not like oh that's her responsibility i don't need to do this i'm like i'm just more like i'm there so why don't i just do this thing kind of thing and i also don't like if there was a task or something and then Taylor was to say like oh I didn't get to do that because I was working all day right I don't in my head go I was working all day and my level of work was probably higher fire, firing higher cylinders than your work and I was probably more working harder I don't even think of these things I just go okay I'll just do it like I, I'll, I'll just do it or like whatever it's not worth me even like bringing up I don't kind of be like that's your job that's this job I'm the man I make the money I do this I'm just more I just kind of do shit I don't know I don't know if that's a bitch mode in me no I don't I mean I think it's only I think the danger if we're talking about like not wanting to be a bitch that's like being taken advantage of and like mm -hmm. walked all over by your wife or your girlfriend is more if is she the one who constantly dictates like which things you do and which things she do does? And I don't think we've ever really had a conversation really about it. I think it's more we just kind of gravitate towards things, and there's just certain things that are mutual. That if I guess I'm I'm not trying to look okay, for so, Taylor to be my mother, right? I'm not like trying to be like. Well, which are the things that are in the gray area? I guess which are the ta the responsibilities that are like sometimes it's you, sometimes it's her. Feeding the dogs. That's one for us that like. A lot of times Julia's cooking dinner. So like while she's cooking dinner, she's like, hey, can you feed the dogs? I'm not going to be like, fuck it. Fuck you. You go feed the dogs. <laughs> like, I'll be like, you know, like you're cooking our dinner. Yeah, I'll go feed the dogs. Yeah, but see, even that, it's just more like, well, dude is like my dog. So I just I pick all the responsibilities really mainly. But like, yeah, I like feed him in the morning and then at night, like I usually feed him for dinner. But it, one of us would just be like, hey, did you feed dude? And be yeah. like, oh, no. OK, I'll go do it. Yeah. Whether she's like, did you feed dude? And I'll say, oh, no. That If she's asking, that means like she'll go do it if I say no. Well, I guess I'm trying to identify like which are the shared responsibilities. And for us, I guess some of it is the dogs. So, like Julie will always take the dogs out all day long. But at night, Julie is like, but it's also like a girl thing. She's like kind of like scared to go out like in the dark with the dogs. So like then I'll let the dogs out before bed because it's dark out. I, I guess there's there's not like this like but, li list that we've we've had. It's more like I would say more times than none, Taylor cooks dinner and wash the and washes the dishes. Well, I know Taylor keeps your house clean, but she's always there yeah. cleaning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I guess like Taylor does the laundry. 
I don't do any laundry. There, there's not a moment since Taylor has lived in my house that I have ran the wa- washing machine. Yeah, I can't remember the last time that uh, that I've ran the laundry machine. Yeah, I just yeah. I just don't do that. And yeah. even like like I don't, don't want to say like cleaning up, but I'm more like oh I have like cleaners that, that come like I I don't need to Swiffer on the weekends. Like I'm not gonna do that like yeah. uh, kind of thing. So I don't know. I guess I. I, anything I, I would almost say like anything outside the home I probably gravitate to like sometimes th- and I actually didn't like it but like there was like it would be like uh, like mildew build up on like the window sills outside it's like it would be this green shit I don't know Texas thing from the humidity or the I don't know I'll get like green kind of build up and I'll see it for a couple of days and I'm like I need really need to get out there and do it and then sometimes like Taylor be like oh I'll just go I'll, I'll go do it and I go no 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 like no 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 like I'm gonna like that's a man thing. Yeah, yeah. I think it's kind of like almost like outside the house, I take care of stuff, and yeah. then almost like inside the house, Taylor takes care of it. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, but I, I'll help her. It's like if I'm sitting and playing a video game, and mm-hmm. I look over at my office, and I see her like folding a bunch of clothes on the bed, like I don't do it every time. But like sometimes I'll go in there <laughs> and be like, like, hey, let me help you. Yeah, but, you know, but you're like normally I'm trying to level up, but <laughs> but I'm sure sometimes <laughs> but she, I just die. <laughs> but also she might be like, not like you're gonna fuck it up, but like you're not gonna fold, it, you're not gonna do it right. So like let yeah. me just do it, kind of thing. And she, as I can't wrap my head around it, but she says that she like likes doing that. Look, I think at the end of the day, what's important is that we're also doing it for the greater good. Meaning that like yeah. the things that I'm doing, like like it's nice if she's doing the laundry and she understands Max doesn't want to do the laundry and that's like a nice thing that like adds like yeah. uh reciprocity to the relationship. You know what I mean? Like it's like it's increasing the like hey, I'm doing this cuz I know like that that it takes a load off of your back. The same way that like when you go out and do the mildew, she's probably like she really appreciates that. So I think like the division responsibility is important, but I also think they need to be done from a place of not of scorekeeping and that's the that's the tough thing about relationships, right? Like not of like scorekeeping or I did this so you do that, but more like you both almost like want to try and contribute to like the things that are going to be meaningful well yeah i i I look at it a couple ways one i think taylor understands that i financially support the house the bills the the things right so taylor under there's no there's a underlying agreement we haven't had this conversation of like look you don't need to pay for shit i will pay for everything but i want you to do x y and z because you're not paying any of the bills i've never had that conversation with her but i think she understands of like hey i got to He's pulling his weight in the financial department. I should pull my weight with, like, bringing value to the house. And another thing that Taylor and I discussed, which is something I've really never, like, gone in depth on this thought, but I think a lot of it, my personality comes from a lot of my upbringing because from the major part of my life, from 10 to 18, which is when I probably developed the most, right, I lived with my mom. I lived with a woman. Like, my, I didn't have a, any siblings with me. I didn't have a father figure with me right so it was just like my mom so i think the na- nurturing w- i don't even know how that applies but i think that l- makes me who i am because i wasn't raised by i never saw division of labor in the parents i never mm-hmm. saw like a, a masculine father figure because my dad passed away when i was you know 15 so and i didn't live with him for you know starting at 10 so like i never had like this like manly father figure to like aspire to kind of be as I got older and developed more than man because man my dad started you know breaking down his you know, his body started deteriorating you know when I was like 13 so yeah I think being raised by my mom made me a lot of who I am of like just because I was always helping my mom all the time right like because she needed help she wasn't just by herself so I was just I just continued that in my life that makes sense you yeah. know so God and you just jump. You just you're like, so we're going to God, man. <laughs> Everyone, everyone's got different beliefs. Yeah, on God, on religion. And you told me recently. It seems to me, at least, you, most of your life you've been basically not religious. I don't know if you've been like atheist, like there's no God, but it's not something you've like thought too much about. Or it hasn't played like a big role in your life. But recently, some light bulb went off. Not that you like, you're like a, a devout believer now, but some light bulb went off to like, I'm open to exploring this more. Yes. What what was that moment? I think I've always just been curious as to like what's you know does it all exist? Why do people believe in it so greatly when there's no like physical proof? But what 
led you to having these thoughts? I'd probably say being with Taylor probably has helped a good amount. Um, significantly more than when I was before Taylor because but, I really had no reason to go down the path of religion. But was it something she said or something that like happened? Because she's she's religious. She talks about it. She, you know, j is open about her faith. Um, she doesn't push it onto me or try to like convert me or really talk to me all about, she doesn't like bring it up randomly and be like, we should really talk about your salvation, you know? She, uh, we should. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she like will watch services on Sunday mornings periodically. She'll, you know, it's, and I don't know if there's like, you know, a girl thing, but she'll post even like Bible verses on like social. And, you know, there may be some girls that are doing that just so they appear, but I think that she b brings, she, but she's done these things since you've known her. Yes. But like what's changed recently? I think just getting older. Like I really do. I think just getting older and, I think falling in love with Taylor and me f realizing that like now my purpose in life is to make sure that if something happens to me that Taylor is taken care of or my family is be taken care of. And so I think I don't, I don't really under, I don't really know why I've been more open to hearing about religion and faith. Um, I think it's just a time thing. I think it's just like a, I've just matured. And I think that I got to a point in my life where I'm like, I was resistant to it, and now I'm open to exploring it. Okay. But I don't know if I'll ever have a come-to-Jesus moment where I just, again, you know, drop to my knees and sob to God or, like, you know, like pray at night or pray in the morning or read the Bible or highlight in the Bible or want to watch a service or go to church. Like, I would go to church with Taylor, but I don't—there's not any ounce of me that is, like— Man, like tomorrow being Sunday, I'd I'd really like to go to church, like yeah. so. Well, it's interesting because, I mean, I've always been I was someone who was raised Catholic and I always believed. I, I mean, I haven't been like a, a growing up. We went to church. We always said grace before. Yeah. And, and I went meals. to church every day yeah. for the first like ten years of my life. Like yeah. my 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 dad and my stepmom. Every day or every Sunday. Every Sunday. Sorry. <laughs> every Sunday. Um, for like yeah. a, my whole childhood was at church. Yeah. What I'm saying is, I've always had that underlying belief. And I've always considered myself someone who believes in God, and I've always believed. But definitely since being married and now with kids coming close, it's been a renewed, like, uh, I don't know, natural feeling inside of me that uh, of, of wanting to have, I guess, a closer relationship with, with God. I, I think I think I want to be a good example for my kids, and I think that the world has gone f very far away from uh, the, the righteous path, right. Of like, you know, just with, well, you get like now with like the L whatever you call it, like the alphabet mafia, some people call it like the <laughs> LGBTQ, yeah. like, like really trying to push that on children, which I mean, I'm very much against, I'm okay. People choosing to do things with their own life in private, but I'm very much against like teachers, like asking pronouns and like leading well, see, kids see, to that, having these questions. That's not even what I'm saying. I'm, I'm more like, but that that's, I'm saying that that is directly, a result yeah. of society and religion being further and further and further decoupled from each other. I think that when I met Taylor, I realized this is going to be the mother of my children. And then I start picturing my life of like, oh, fuck, like I'm going to have kids. Right. And one of my worst fears is not being the best dad I can be to these kids and them turning out and, you know, harming themselves, someone else hating, you know, resenting, whatever. So I'm like, OK, like what are everything I need to do to be the best dad I can be? Right. And with the world as it is and like so much chaos going on, that's, I think, maybe brought me to religion where I go, not like you need to be a, a most hardcore Christian, but I think generally when people follow, I just use Christianity as an example, but like when they follow religion, I think it puts you on the right path of right and wrong, good values, good morals. Like it, it's, it puts you on the right path. Yeah. So I think yeah. that. That's why I'm like, 100%. oh, I want to make sure my kids like are raised, you know, to have the same value. Like, you know, I like my morals and values. And I'm like, maybe if I introduce religion, it's like an additional influence, positive influence. Correct. On them. But, I, but I'm also like, oh, I don't want to just be faking it for my kids. So maybe like I should explore this more before I even they get to the age or even are born so that I can be like, hey, you know, it's like, oh, dad loves to work out. I want to be healthy and fit like dad. Right. Like, oh, dad is a good person and follows religion. I want to kind of follow like that. So um, that's, I think, also something that has like opened my eyes to it because I'm like, Taylor wants to raise the kids 
you know, they want to, she wants to go to church with the, with the kids. And, you know, part of me is like, well, like, so why would we start then? But we wouldn't like go right now. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah. And I'm like, I, I, I'm fine with that. And, and I also see the benefit in that, not only from a literal religious aspect of it, but also from the, I think that will help put them on the right path. Okay. So you're talking very practically, which yeah. I also agree with, because I think seeing my parents, they were very generous people who, you know, would, I would go and do community service and things with them. And it was always through kind of a religious lens that it happened. And that's always what I was taught that like you should help less fortunate people than you, because yeah. that's like the path of, of Jesus essentially. Um, so on a practical sense, I, I agree now in a more personal b- belief mm-hmm. of God, like where, where do you stand now? And I know you said you're like open to, to like maybe having a, a come to Jesus moment, but like if I was to ask you now, like, do you believe in God or like what are you what are your thoughts? And it doesn't have to necessarily be like the religious Christian God, yeah. exactly how it's described in the Bible. I think there's a lot of things. I think there's a lot of things that are either that are internal in me or that I see in the world where I go, I understand that a greater being has a presence in this world. But then there's a so you believe in some greater being. I, I yeah, because but I also believe in like the whole I believe in science, right? Like I believe in like factual thing. Um, but this guy on this podcast actually said something about about science. I don't know. Um, well, I think was that the recently I saw it was a, a physicist. He was on Piers Morgan, but it, he put it interestingly. But not even and this is always kind of how I felt like. And obviously there are like scientific principles that govern like like the physical like world that we live in. But there's a lot of answers science doesn't have. Yes. Because even if you talk to a strict atheist, they're like, no, like maybe they don't. All, I don't want to say they all say this, but there's a lot who would say like, no, like it was the Big Bang. Like there was mm-hmm. a moment it was a, and that's when all matter was created. But then they can't answer. And that doesn't mean that it, uh, it's God. I mean, that's what I believe. But like what, what created the okay, Big Bang? But then what was before that? It's like, well, the, the, there was no matter before that. Well, then if there was no matter and then all of a sudden there was all this matter, like that means something that lived in a different non-matter dimension or something led to this happening. And then maybe that's not an old man in the sky. Obviously, the the Christian belief would be that God created man in his image. If, you know, if we are this being that like dominates the world and what makes us different from all the other other animals is like our like our spirit and our consciousness. I think that as a religious person, I can say, yeah, I mean I guess it would make sense for God to, to look something like us if 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 like we're like his his creation on earth. Yeah. But if it's my point is I guess my point is this. To me, it seems obvious that there's some God, whether or not you want to use that term. There's some greater intelligence or force here that created existence Mm -hmm. and and humans. It would be hard for me. No one could convince me that that's not the case just because I don't know what – there's no explanation for everything else. I think that, like, how people choose to interpret that God is where, like, religion comes in and the different religions tell, like, the different stories of who this God is and why he created the earth – and these things, so I can see a lot of, I guess, ambiguity there. Like I choose, like that's why you call it like faith, right? Like I choose, I have the faith to believe like the Christian uh, set of events, but I find it very hard to argue that there's no God in the first place, or like, and again, it doesn't have to be the religious God, but some greater. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, I I say a lot that I'm like, oh, I want to do things that make my dad proud, or like my dad's looking down, you know, on me and and stuff, and like. Wh- that's like the first thing that's the way that I say it naturally right yes so it's almost like well then I must like that's how you feel yeah yeah, because I'm more like oh I must believe there's something because if not then I then I'm I'm not doing anything make my dad proud because he's just dead like he's just dead he's not there my dad's not looking down on me and proud of what I'm doing because he's dead he's not there you know so it's like I almost like want to believe that there is a heaven right because I want my dad to be there because I want him to be seeing what I'm doing right so I think that is an interesting way that I look at stuff because I say these things about my dad. But these are just like natural intuitions yes. almost. Yeah, and, and because I think it's almost if you don't believe, it's like I'm also then like, well, then what the fuck is the point of anything? Well, that's the that's where things get tricky. If you are like a strict atheist, they're like, like we're just like pieces of like meat with like heart and like blood flowing through our veins and like that's what it is then that kind of removes like the inherent value well, of human life i saw this i saw this podcast thing where they, they basically said like you know if, if you think you're just science and matter and made up then basically like anything that you do to me right 
is I can't I can't be upset with you because it's just your chemical it's just the way that you're programmed like it's just you know neurons firing and like it just is what it is like David had no choice right but if you think that like the decisions that someone else makes that they decided to do that then they have their own free will then they have their own consciousness and like being then I'm like there then it's beyond science I think that but that's the thing that would separate humans from animals right like animals yeah. At least our under our scientific understanding is that they pretty like, and I know say like dolphins have like kind of like more I guess, and there's different species that have maybe more uh, higher levels of intelligence. Yeah. But in general, we look at animals as like reacting to stimuli, right? And like that's kind of is what it is. But but then again, dogs have like different temperaments, right? Like yeah, I, it's I look at it as like I want, and it's not like I'm, I want something to happen to make me believe. It's like I'm almost like I'm there. I just need to be pushed over. And I don't know what that thing is. And I don't know if it's having a kid, having a near death moment, you know, someone else having a fucking incident that changes my fate. I don't know what would need to occur, but it's definitely not going to be for me just like watching a bunch of YouTube videos on people saying how great God is and how real it is. Because I see a lot of science, but I almost want to believe so badly because I'm like, I hope that there's a heaven because I hope that. I can, you know, spend eternity with Taylor and, you know, see my dad again and like see all these things, but it's hard to be like, what is that? You know? So, but, but if anything, if it's real or not real, it's almost a better, a better bet to just go with the like, it exists thing because in case it does, like you want to, like an insurance policy. Yeah. You want to be there, right? <laughs> yeah. Like I'd rather err on the side of it is real than the side of nah. <laughs> Well, also, it's because if you say nah, yeah, it's not happening no matter what. Yeah, if you say yeah and it doesn't happen, you're like ah fuck. But like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, so but you're like hedging your bet. Yeah, if it is like so, it's almost like a better strategy. But it also, and I agree. Okay, so I agree with that. But I also would agree that like religious principles are like at least, and I, I'm not very familiar with all other religions, but at yeah. least like Christian religious principles are essentially just to like uplift the community and help people that are like worse off than you and to like be a good person who like treats other people well that's what so like why not like joe, why not adhere to that well joe said a, a possibility is that the, the what, did, the what did joe say he said that like he's like back in the day he's like how do you you have like all this society how do you get a large amount of people to like follow rules and not have chaos well you create this like this eternity concept that like if you be good you go to this even better world right Interesting. so it almost keeps people in check is he not religious i don't think he's very religious okay. no i don't i don't think i think he might even feel more like on the air of me of like i think he's open to it yeah but no i would not say joe's religious okay. um but yeah i mean th that's why it's like pe super religious people and super anti-religious people and super pe people in the middle all say things that make sense to me yes and so it's like, I understand what anti-religion people, like, I understand where you're coming from. I see your point of view. Yeah. I like absorbing all this information. I don't believe in all the manosphere shit that I hear. I don't What's think... Manosphere shit? Like, you know, all the red pill stuff, like... About religion? No, 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 just in general. Like, okay. Taylor will hear me listen to some, like, red pill stuff, and she'll be, like, disgusted what I'm saying, <laughs> and then she'll be like, do you believe this? And I'm like, I'm like, no, I just... It's an interesting concept. Yeah, I, I yeah. just, I'm open to hearing everyone's perspective it's i disagree with what they're saying but i'm it's like when i had the fresh and fit guys on my podcast like yeah. i don't agree with everything they're saying a lot of what they say yeah. but i'm open to, to talk about it and like i don't have to agree with it and just because i listen to someone doesn't mean i'm gonna be converted you know that's the problem with the world today though man is that people are too uh too sold on like their tribe right yeah it's like fuck the liberals or like fuck western women i don't know man i just yeah i I think if Taylor was like, hey, every Sunday we're going to go to church, I still don't think me going to church and sitting at church... That's would, not going to push you over the edge. Yeah, but I, so I don't know what, what it is. I do need to find a... I, I, it's, that's a habit of mine that... I say habit that once it wasn't like something I do with my family that I haven't done on my own. And I went to one, one church in uh, in Austin a couple of months ago. I was like, I want to go try some churches in the area. And, and, and whatever, uh, there's all different sects of like uh, Christianity, right? Yeah. And I'm Catholic, and that's what I'm used to. And I went to some church that was like a, one of these like more like new age like churches, and it was for me, it was just like the strangest experience. And I thought it was a Catholic church because I googled Catholic churches, and I walked in, and I was like, 
I don't know what's happening at all. What do they here. do, or what do they? It's just like the all like the the traditions, like how the mass is led, is different. People are like standing up and like shouting things more. When I'm like, oh. we used to like it different. I'm like, this is like, it, not that it was like a bad experience, but I was like, this wasn't this wasn't what I was looking for. Yeah, I I don't know. Like I yeah. Taylor will have a sermon on on a Sunday, and like I'll sit there and like watch it, but I just don't know what that information is doing for me. Yeah. Like I'm I'm like sitting there and I'm like hearing what he's saying yeah. about. God this, God that, God's doing this, this is why this. And I'm just like, okay, but like this ain't going to convince me. Yeah. But I don't know what, I think it'll be something that'll internally happen that'll make me hardcore believe or I don't know. Or just remain skeptical. Skeptical. It's a good word. Yeah. Well, I don't know, bro. Thanks for coming on again, bro. The wide range. I hope the people <laughs> like it. I always, you know, I love talking about a lot of topics yeah. and I love talking about money, but I always feel so hesitant because it's like, how do you talk about money? How do you talk about wealth, but not come off like you're well, bo boisterous? Well, that's why today I wanted to talk about like the journey. Uh, yeah. I don't, and again, I don't know. Hopefully people enjoyed the seeing that journey a little bit. Obviously, obviously uh, we've both had maybe similar paths, at least the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. But uh I do agree that as soon as I got to a, even just living in like a nicer apartment in Austin versus like the shithole in Boston I lived in. Uh, but then again, I think there's some amount of our, of people who will be turned off by success just because they're not seeing that reflected in their own life. And I like to look at but like, those aren't ultimately if that's someone's mindset, like our videos aren't going to motivate them at all anyway. And it's probably, I don't know, like I, I'm a very big believer that like everything we see the world as a mirror. Like yeah. when people watch our videos, it's kind of like a reflection of them, right? And like they're kind of like we we it's a, humans are like very egotistical and everything we see. I don't think we can help but usually make a comparison. To like, well, how does this reflect on me? And I think a lot of people can use that. Obviously, we've used it productively by seeing people ahead of us and acknowledging. Hey, and even now, there's there's people of higher levels of success that will even get close to touching, right? Like like yeah. we're, like we're not at the top of the game by any means, but I think we've been able to or anyone who grows is somewhat able to like see people ahead of them and see that as like, oh, that's realistic then. Versus like, yeah. fuck that guy for having money and it's not fair. Well, if anything, us specifically, it it wasn't like we did a little bit of stuff and then just had this fucking rocket ship, right? It was like, and we became successful. It was like, yeah, over 12 years I've been successful. Maybe the past three I've been a quicker trajectory than the previous, but like... This, this didn't happen overnight. Or it didn't happen in a couple years. It happened on over a decade. A decade. Over yes. a decade yeah. of consistency. And, like, you've seen me. Here's an idea I have. Hey, I launched it. Oh, shit, it's super successful now. My whole life's changed because of it. But, like, you saw me just come up with it. You saw me start it. You saw, you, you've seen everything. So, well, like, it is realistic. Yeah, yeah, it's very realistic. It's realistic. Look at my fucking old videos where, like, the sagging headliner in my Jeep when I'm driving around doing my f day of eating videos. Like, it's not <laughs> realistic to go from that or from me driving the bicycle living in the old studio apartment in Boston to here in a year. That's not realistic. Yeah. But it is realistic that, um, yeah. <laughs> Sounds so, like, uh, cliche, but, like, you stay consistent, you keep your head down, you grind, you learn from the mistakes you make, you don't give up when you have a failure. Instead, you kind of, like, use it as data. It's like, okay, I don't do that next time. And, like... After some amount of years, I truly believe for 90% of people, let's say, because I know there is some luck and opportunity involved, but for at least 90, 95% of people that if they just don't give up, like keep their head down, learn from the mistakes they make, or pivot based on that, they're going to get to a higher level of success than they could ever imagine. I think there's an old saying that says, uh, you know, like the harder you work, the luckier you get. And I feel like yeah, maybe it's ninety nine percent. You know, well, I, I, the reason I say in ninety percent is like, look, there are people who are born in like some like third world war torn countries, and yeah. it probably doesn't matter how hard they grind, like they they probably yeah. just don't have the opportunity. Yeah, and I, and I'll never like take away the fact that I'm like, you know, grew up in a, we grew up in the United States. Yeah, not in extreme poverty, like you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like I I had a lot of chips in my favor, I guess, just starting out, but. But even like I, the guy I interviewed last week, Bismarck, mm -hmm. born in Nigeria. His dad died at one years old. He came with his mom to the States at nine years old. And like, yes, I guess he was still able to like, uh, I'm, I'm not that familiar with Nigeria, but I imagine there's a lot less opportunity there than the States. Yeah. But like, 
you can still come from like a really like, I mean, you told me right now, if you say, hey, there's a kid in Nigeria, his dad just died, he's, he's one years old, like, does the future look good for him? I'm like, it's, it's probably gonna be tough, right? Like, there's probably not yeah. that many opportunities, but like, like, if he can do it and other people can, from really hard circumstances can do it, like it, it can be done. Yeah, I think it just, if anyone's at any point in their life and they think the world's against them, you just, you, it's a tough thing to do, but like you have to analyze everything and go like, what can I control and what can't I control? And like the things you cannot control, like truly, then you just have to pivot on those things. But like, what what do you think is like, uh, like against you that you actually are able to change what that thing is? At least influence. At yeah, least correct. Influence. So it's like it, when you zoom out and you look at that, then then it's like only then I got to have to fully analyze someone to just be like, oh, it just it was impossible for me. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, all right, let's let's go back. Yeah, you no, know, let's let's go back. Let, let's let's like see what you did, what what happened. I guess it's not it's not impossible for anyone. For some people, it's going to be harder, at least at first, to like put themselves in like the position to then be able to build from there. Whereas we, we started in a position that we we're fortunate enough, even if we basically had nothing, like it was still a position where we were able to start building from. Well, same even with with sour strips, bro. Like I get comments frequently that'll be like, you know, the only reason it's successful is because you have this giant audience. I'm like, well, yeah, that did springboard it dramatically, and it <laughs> wouldn't be successful. But it's like I also built the audience over seven years. <laughs> like, I've gotten that comment before, bro. It's like your business is only successful because your YouTube following. It's like, and then how did I get the YouTube following? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but, like what? Like I, that. That was like the first seven years of entrepreneurship. I guess maybe it's not entrepreneurship, but it was. I guess it is, right? Mm -hmm. Building a YouTube audience is essentially building the business. Yeah. Look at us now, mom. Doing great. All right, bro. Of course, I will link your... Oh, that was a good one. Another crisp one. I'll link your Instagram and YouTube, primarily YouTube, in the uh, description. Anything yeah. else? Mm, eat more sour strips. Stay beastly. Woof. <laughs>